So today's story takes us back to 1910 uh, and we're in Aslindon. We're back in Aslindon, not far from where I live in Elm Shore. And we're talking about the story of Sarah Hannah Barnes, who was aged 23 back in 1910 and she lived in front of me, well, <laughs> what's left of it, at number 29 Backbank Terrace. Or when I say she lived there, she resided there for a few months, up until around February of 1910. Now, when she left, she took most of her furniture with her and she relocated to Loughclough in Rotterstall Um Now, what she kept doing, she kept coming back to Bank Bank Terrace and she asked the owner, Mrs Taylor, Margaret Taylor, if she could leave furniture there and she'd come and collect it as and when she needed it and she would also be dropping off items in the process. Now, Mrs Taylor agreed to it, so yeah, that's fine. She'd known her for 12 months and she trusted her. Anyway, prior to the events that took place on a Saturday, Margaret Taylor kept smelling this pungent smell coming from somewhere in the house and eventually she went down into the basement and she came across an old tin box. Now, when she opened that tin box, she forced it open, she found the body of what at the time looked like a young baby. Now, obviously horrified, she's gone and got the police and Sergeant Walker turned up. Sergeant Walker's then took the tin box away for further ex examination and the following morning on the, I think it was a Sunday or maybe a Monday, um, a Dr Robinson did the post-mortem on the baby and it was a newborn child, newborn baby, uh, child. Now, it was mummified, it looked like it had been dead for quite some time. So obviously the police have then gone to Loughclough and they've not arrested Sarah but they've brought her in for questioning and she's admitted that she had the baby born, well, the baby was born, 18 months. Now, this is what she originally told the police. It was born 18 months prior to obviously being found on that Saturday. So, obviously, she was taken in, she was arrested, uh, and then when it went to trial at the Lupula Sizes, she actually then told the judge that the baby was, in fact, born... It, it could have been up to two years before 1910. So, you're talking uh, 1908. And she gave birth in her father's house over in Townsend Street, which is further that, in that direction. Now, the reason why she didn't bury the child or let authorities know is because, basically, she was poor. She had no money. She couldn't afford to have the baby buried in the proper manner. So, obviously, we, we weren't there. We don't know the events. But, in hindsight, she probably should have told the authorities. But she didn't, and she's ended up putting the baby boy inside a tin box, which then she's left at number 29, Backbank Terrace. Now, Sarah, she was found obviously guilty of, what's the word, not murder. I mean, the authorities thought it was neglect. The doctor, Dr. Robinson, actually thought she neglected the child and that's why it had died. But it wasn't neglect. I think if you read between the lines, it was a case of the baby being born. It was a stillborn, a stillbirth. Because Sarah turned around and said that there was no crying, there was no sound coming from the baby on the day it was born. So obviously, she probably just thought, well, it's died, it's, you know, it's sad, she's upset, obviously, trauma traumatised by it, but she's put it in a box. She's not... Yeah, it's wrong that she's not actually gone through the right procedures, the right channels, but still, at the end of the day, she's not committed murder, has she? What are your thoughts on that? So as you can see, we've obviously got some remnants of something going on here, and we've got a wall. Now I don't think this is Victoria, it could well be, but it looks quite modern to be fair. But then behind it, we have got an outer wall here. And that goes all the way around, I can see remnants in the tree line there, it goes all the way around. And we think this was Backbank Terrace, but as you can tell, there's quite an incline. So how these houses were built, it amazes me. Now, I do have an old photograph, because if you look down here, the old photograph that I want to show you on screen, I think this is the outer wall. I think all down there, that is the basement. So the basements would have been down here, and the houses would have come up, if you will. They'd have been straight here, all the way across. That could well be a pathway, and that could be the, where the basement door would be, cellar doors. 
and all this would have been obviously the building. But all this here, Back Bank Terrace, 1910. Quite sure what this part would have been, but as you can see, the mud's quite soft. Keep the sink into it. And we do have, like you say, some kind of structure, some kind of wall going on here. Like I say, I'm not really sure what that is. Well, this is kind of cool through the tree line. I'll show you guys this little walkway. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but there's definitely a wall just right in front of the camera. And across there to the right was Bank Terrace, or Back Bank Terrace. Going to the left possibly could also be part of it, but there's definitely a wall in the middle. Taken over by nature. So again, when we do these little out and about videos, some places are very difficult to get to. As you can see, that's where we've just climbed through. Uh, and we've just gone all the way up. Um, but no matter how much modern ways start to take over and, you know, things change there'll always be history there'll always be something left behind I mean we can see here this part here I mean obviously you've got the wall even though you've got obviously more modern groundwork going on you still got the lane going up you still got the steps the stone steps going up but but if you notice when we're walking down here we've even got cobbles We've still got cobbles coming through and again no matter how much we hide these things history will always find a way always find a way and i think it's amazing but yeah so what are your thoughts on that it's only a quick one this one because i really can't uh, i can't get to the ruins as such but um what are your thoughts was sarah wrongfully arrested and did I mention as well, she was not, she was kind of convicted. Um, she was convicted of neglect, really, because the judge um, they ended up sending her away to some kind of home to be, re to be reformed. Now, reformed from what? She never committed murder. She was obviously traumatic and, you know, she was traumatised enough losing a baby. It must have been very difficult for her to, to leave that baby, you know, to put it in a tin box and obviously not being able to bury it properly, give it a proper burial. But they actually sent her away. Now, I don't know for how long she was sent away for. I'll, I will try and find that out. But she was actually sent to a, to a home to be reformed. So what are your thoughts on this? You know, I mean, was it wrong? You know, should she have served any time for it? I mean, she served enough. She probably served all her life thinking about her poor child. But, um, yeah, I'd be interested to know your thoughts on this one. You know, it's a sad tale. And it happened here again on our doorstep here in Aslindon. Um, I personally feel like she was wrongly done by, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Now, if you like this video, uh, comment down below, subscribe. Again, this is only a quick one, uh, but comment, subscribe down below, and uh, I'll be back soon with another tale from the past.